So in the final challenge of 2022, we have the Schools Out Challenge with multiple columns for different people. And we want to work out, out of the friends, Holly, Taylor, Shay and the others, who's got the highest average score, what are their individual scores, and we can use Power Query to tidy up this messy data. Check out all the other Power Query challenges in the playlist for 2022. Let's go. This is how the data is laid out, and it's laid out in a pretty bad way. But we need Power Query to do a couple of things. We need to grab these dates, which relate to all these results. We need to grab these subjects. We need to get these different people. We've got Sarah, we've got Shay, we've got Holly, we've got Taylor. Okay, we've got Lani over here. They've all got different scores. We want to work out who's got the highest average and then for each date as well. And we can break these down by subjects. Right, so how do you get started? Okay, now normally you would turn this into a range or even pull it from this file. So you don't even open this file. Go into Power Query and just pull in the sheet. That's probably the way I'd recommend it. But let's say you have to do it for some reason inside this file. Let's say you want to be able to refresh it in this file itself. Now you could um, set a named range and that's probably what I'd recommend because turning this into a table probably isn't the best option. And you may want to highlight, you know, a whole chunk of extra columns or extra rows for when new data gets added, maybe a thousand rows or something like that. Okay. And you could give it a name up in here like data. Or here's a little hack. I'm not sure I recommend this. In fact, I don't recommend this. But under the page layout, you could actually set the print area for that range. And Power Query can reference the print area. Okay. So I'm not 100% sure why you would do this. Maybe you want to give the user the ability to change it without renaming the range, but it's risky. But I thought I'd show you this anyway. It's a quirky thing. So there's this print area set. You can then go data and then click on the from table slash range icon. Okay. And what that does, it just pulls it in as the print area range. See the source here? See, it's saying sheet one print area. And that's not the safest thing in the world. I would go for the proper named range instead. Okay, but interesting you can do it. So let's just call this my um, data source. Okay. And I will, uh, let's not do the change type step. I don't need that to happen. It's a bit of a pointless step. I don't want to load this. I'm going to just go reference it and build, because I'm going to build two queries. Okay, so I've, I may feed off that one. I may just feed off this one I'm working on here. So this is going to be my results. Okay, so we've got a few challenges here. We've got the date. We need to pull that across. We've got the subject, English, maths, science, and then we've got the individual names. So I'm going to start with the date. Um, there's, I'm going to add a column and then fill it down. Okay, so I want to add a custom column and then fill it down. See, so a couple of options, you know, a couple of people did this different ways. One way was this, right click, duplicate column. Okay, change it to a date column, which causes everything else to error out. Replace the errors. Okay, right click, replace errors with nulls. Okay, and then right click, fill down, fill down. That's a nice date column. I like that, you know, it, it's a decent approach. What I did like, I liked, um, so Daniil and um, Alejandro uh, did, a, did something like this. This is quite cool. Okay, I, I quite like this idea. I wanna say, add a column. I wanna say, add, add column, custom column. Okay, and I wanna reference this. I wanna say, if this is a date, then, grab the date, otherwise null. So how do you do that? So here we go, add column, custom column. You could you could do this another way. You could say, look, if column two equals null, okay, because the nulls are there. So that was a nice simple approach as well, but maybe that's not always gonna be null, so this way it's a bit safer. So you're gonna go if, okay, column one 
equals. Now, how do I say it's a date? There's a couple of ways of doing this. You could do this. Okay, you could do this. Try date dot from. Remember, never type the dot date from. Now, interestingly, IntelliSense doesn't come up after try, which is a bit weird, but date dot from, okay, uh, column one. So try and get the date from that, okay. Otherwise, null. Okay, so that's, this is one way of doing it. And I click OK, and now I've got the date, okay, and the other ones have gone null because you can't turn the other ones into a date. So that's one nice little option, okay. And the other one, the one that Daniil and, um, oh sorry, the one that uh, Alejandro tried here, this is cool. Okay, so we just go uh, custom column if um, value type okay, of the column one. So if the type is date time, actually not is, we have to go equals date time, then column one else no. Okay, so that's another way of doing it, which is pretty cool. Ah, date time wasn't recognized, okay, because you have to say is type date time. So if value type equals type date time, okay, and then over here we've got our date. Okay, then you've got to turn that into a date and fill down. So whichever way you do it, pretty cool. So we'll change that into a date and right click, fill down. I like those approaches, okay? None of these are right or wrong. And actually this added custom, we could go back here and call it date. And then your change type will break because it's referring to custom. So you really should do that there. And then you should change this. So name your columns right at the start, okay? Cool. Then, uh, Daniel did a cool one to filter this out because you can't really filter out the specific dates because I want, you know, the, the dates may change in the future and I want this to be a repeatable exercise, but you can filter out the things that are dates. Okay, so I can filter out, let's just filter out a date. Okay, so each doesn't equal and then it says something. Okay, so let's just break this apart. So this bit you can replace. Okay. And you could say, if it doesn't equal, okay, um, type date time, type date time. So if each uh, value dot type of column one, okay, doesn't equal date time, and then it's gone, yeah, so it's removed them. And then we want to get the um, English across. So if this is it subject, then English. So we add column, custom column, and we say, okay, subject simply if column one equals subject, okay, then grab column, uh, column two, else null. No. Click OK. And again we've got our columns and we can right click, uh, fill, where is it gone? Fill down. Beautiful. Okay, we can change that type. We can do all the change types and things at the end as well just to keep it all neat. Um, then I want to get rid of the any columns containing the word subject or name, because I don't really need those rows. So I get rid of, um, or oh, and the nulls as well. So I don't need nulls, I don't need subject, and I don't need name. Always read up here, just in case it's done the inverse. All right, but now we've got some good stuff. Okay, we've got some data here. And then over here, we've got our date and our subject. Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. So some nice solutions. Um, Nick and Luan um, 
they both did some nice things with lists. Okay, so check out their solutions. I'm going to go for the blatant unpivot. Okay, that's the way I find it simplest. I would imagine the list might even be quicker, probably than unpivoting, but let's give this a go. So date and subject, right click, unpivot other columns. Okay, so now we've got this nice little column here. We don't really need the attribute column. We can get rid of it in a bit. But the problem is 87 is Holly's score, 86 is Taylor's score, 78 is Shea's score. I need to move everything up a row. Okay. And I'm going to merge a query with itself using two offset indexes. So here we go. We add an index column that starts at zero. Okay. We can add another index column from one Okay, so this is record one, and I want to grab record one from this row. This is item number three, and I want to grab item three. So I'm going to go home, merge queries. Merging a query with itself, crazy. Okay, so I'm going to use that column and that column so that this 87 will line up with Holly on that, based on that one. Okay, click OK, expand this out. And the only thing I'm interested in is actually the value column. So value, and don't use original column name as prefix. And now we've got Holly, 87, Taylor, 86. And I want to remove the alternate rows. So remove rows, remove alternate rows. Okay, first row to remove would be row two. So I want to get rid of that row. Then I want to and I want to remove one row, skip one row, okay? Beautiful. So then all we need is the date, the subject, the value, and this other value. Right click, remove other columns. Okay, this is name. This is result. And hold down shift while you click on these and change them to text change this one to a let's go whole number maybe it should be decimal but or fixed decimal okay and that's the result and you can sort this by date and then by subject and then by person or whatever order you want this to be sorted beautiful okay so thanks to everybody who submitted their um, options there then the next um technique is to grab the average, okay, and work out who got the highest average. So we're going to go reference this result as a starting point, okay, and this will be the average high, okay, and we just want to group it by date and by person to work out each person's average for that particular date, and then we'll work out who's got the max average, okay. So those two columns, right click, group by, We've got date and name, we just want the average, and we will do the average, and the ab column is the result that we actually want to average. Okay, so there's by date the average. Okay, so what's the highest average and who's got it? So let's go by date, and um, again, by let's do or just by date to be honest, we'll go the max of this average. So right click group by. By date, we want all the rows. So let's just say all. Okay, we'll go all rows. And we also want to add another one. So we want to add an aggregation. We want to go the max is the max of the average column. So the max was for that date was 87.5. And if I now expand out this, I don't need the date because I've already got that. We can see here that Holly had 87.5. That's the max. And you could do an if statement. That would be totally fine. If that equals that, then winner or whatever. OK, but we can do sort of a bit of a fancy bit of maths. Maybe it'd be a bit quicker. I'm not sure. But we could take those two columns, add a column or just go um, add a column where we subtract one from the other. And if the result is zero, zero there, that means that person is the person who got the max. Okay, so we can simply filter this column for the zeros. And then we have, 
right click, remove other columns. The winners, Holly and Taylor. Okay, and then we go home, close and load, close and load two. I'm gonna start it as connection only, only create connection, because I don't want all three tables loaded. I only want two of them. Oh, I should have renamed this one. I thought I did rename that one. Rename average max. Okay, so let's load these two. So results, load two, a table in a new worksheet. Okay, and then this one I'll load right next to it. So right click, load to a table in an existing worksheet just here. And there's the results, beautiful. And then if we add some extra data, so we come down here and we add another day, okay, and we go into our data sheet. And as long as our print area, okay, don't use your print area, that's a terrible idea, but I thought I'd show you anyway. Okay, there's some new data. Here's Keely, she got 90 in music and Sarah got 80 that date. Okay, and let's change one of these. Let's give Shay 99 that day. Okay, so we've updated our data. Let's go back to our results and data refresh all just to see if it works. Refresh all. And there we go. Keely, Shay took over sec on, the, on that date and it's all working. Beautiful. Okay, thanks to everybody who submitted. I hope you've enjoyed these challenges. I hope you find this stuff useful. I love those sort of the ability to filter the column by type. That's pretty cool. Or even do the try and otherwise. So there's a few new little tricks in there that I may not have covered off before. And I'll catch you in the next video.